what's good youtube man we back with another reaction video man and today by the thumbnail and the title man we got nba 2k25 official this is official official gameplay man from um people who actually went up to uh community day and actually played the game and they got the full breakdowns man so we're gonna be watching this you know how we do it man we're gonna go in pick in pick out what we find that is dope and everything that's back just in case they miss anything man we've got the Let's new go dribbling system game. including speed boosting we've got the new go-to shots that can lead to some insane greens we've got the shot rating you need to green consistently we've got the mid-range game covered for all you midi magicians out there we've got the new rhythm shooting system and for all you slashers we've got a detailed meter dunking breakdown mm. we're gonna cover the all-new shot contest system them. and for all the centers we cover the standing dunks and the paint mash we've got devin booker floaters we've got scoopers everything you need to know about layups we've got everything from paint defense to perimeter bumps to bump steals lockdown stay tuned of course we're gonna break down post scoring and spoiler alert it's really good again we've got ankle breakers blowout dribbles patty mills jump shot everything you want to know about nba 2k25 is in this video drop a like let's get it to 10,000 likes and let's get into it and let's Patty talk about dribbling. Okay, there was a lot of things floating around the internet about how you could not speed boost on this game. I don't know. Listen, y'all gotta be careful who y'all talk to. You can speed boost on 2K25. Okay, let's all let's chill. Uh, you can speed boost. Okay, was it different? Absolutely. Is it gonna take us a little while to figure out how to speed boost out of every single move on the game? Of course. Just like 2K24, the beginning of the game. Nobody could speed boost out of stuff. People were spamming Magic Johnson crossover for like two months, right? It took us a while. People thought you had to have Kyrie Irving dribble style to speed boost. And then we realized, okay, you got to do a hezzy out of each dribble move and then you can burst cleanly. It's going to be something like that along the lines for, for 25 as well. We just got to find the sauce. People like Young Dirk and Koza were doing a lot more dribble labbing than me. I just tested it a little bit. I speed boosted with De'Aaron Fox, with John Morant, with LeBron James. And for those of you that were also wondering, LeBron Hotback is back. Yeah, you, you still get the... LeBron Hotback is back. Uh, do I like this idea? No, I do not. Am I going to abuse this idea? Of two, what 2K decide to put back in the game? Yes, I will. The big hot back, and for the small guards, I mean, Chris Paul's got the same thing. So, LeBron hot back is back. You're gonna be doing it. The combos, the quick little combos that uh, like Steph Curry has to like dance behind a screen, and John Morant right there to like get into the mid range. They felt pretty smooth, pretty clean. I love John Morant. That is a move that John Morant used to do on 2K24. That was his um. What it was called, I think it was his uh his rhythm dribble. When you do rhythm dribble and it push you to the other side. Step a little bit, you know, you could spam like the jaw aggressive combo breakdown. Mm. Um Yeah, the aggressive combo breakdown. That's what it is. And I chained together some decent little moves. In my opinion, the big players almost moved better than the small players. But like look at I'm speed boosting with De'Aaron Fox, like no problem. And and this was me labbing for like five to ten minutes you know so that whole thing people were tweeting oh, oh there's no speed boosting i don't know i don't know what these people i don't know if they played the same game as me but you see the cross launch on the uh, crossover right there a little like quick i guess kind of quick stop pull up the magic crossover into like the john wall cross magic crossover is back but it looks way right here there's definitely going to be some ways to get open we just gotta you know 20 minutes of lab in the, the demo game at community day is is not enough it's gonna take a little while you see is that john wall, that, that kind of like john wall snaps right the, there the demo game at community day is, but it looks way tougher though it's not enough it's gonna take a little while you see the john wall snatch back from last year yeah john wall snatch there's a back. lot of ways that we're gonna figure out to get open whether you're on a bigger player a smaller player you can speed boost dribbling is different 100 percent just like every other year we gotta lab it up we gotta find out the best sigs we're using nba players nba players even a kyrie irving uh darren fox a trey young they do not have optimized sigs they have a you know they have a a couple good sigs that's right but they don't have like you're my player where you have you know one of the best animations in every category they might have one or two or three good dribble moves in their package of whatever it is 10 dribble moves let's say 
while your my player has 10 good animations all animations you have are good and give you clean bursts and clean movement Not that fast. these guys are you know, oh yeah I'm about nba to players they have their actual sigs some of them are trash some of their sigs are trash just a bug almost hit me in the eye some of their sigs are trash every year right so let's relax i think we're gonna be fine just like at the beginning of 24 it felt stiff it felt slow nobody could figure out how to move cleanly and speed boost and like i said people were spamming magic johnson crossover for like a month or two we're gonna figure it out when it comes to stizo stizo is gonna go crazy on this game i was able to like dribble backwards a little bit and i'm not any you know i'm not stizo stizo is gonna go absolutely insane on this game all right so let's oh look my at the god i can see it now just from that little move i can see it now the new shot timing profile you have layup timing and shot timing profiles so for layup timing you have real player percentage low normal and high risk you still have your shot timing visual cue at least in the demo version you couldn't create the custom cue that they had talked about so you could just choose from the ones from last year so i put it on push and then for the shot timing profile you see it's set to difficulty based which is basically it just automatically adjusts depending on the difficulty you're playing on so i don't know how that's going to work with online gameplay if that's going to be an option but you still have real player percentage low normal and high risk and essentially you you can read the description with teachers okay. number one wife Bring on the science experiment mayhem. At Kroger Pharmacy, CARE is making it easy to get vaccinated. Open every day with evening hours. Here, but the higher the risk you go, the more you... It's a jump shot timing only has a small impact on your shot chances. Coverage and player ratings are more important. Um, I'm trying to see what they mean by that. It's saying... And they got one for layup. Okay, they got one for layup. And shot timing, visual cue is back, input type is back. It says, um, jump shot timing only has a small impact on your shot chances. Okay. Your timing matters. And I'm gonna be honest, unless you have bad Wi Fi or you're just extremely new to 2K, after testing normal and high risk and, and all these options, it, everyone's gonna play on high risk like everyone that plays the game and is i'd say average to above average unless you have bad wi-fi you're gonna play on high risk because it just it gives you more control over whether you green or not and shooting on high risk as you're gonna see even with low three-point ratings i was still able to spark so here's what i was talking about you see i have it set to high risk reward on your shot timing profile okay let's say jump shot timings considerable effects the shot outcome with a higher chance at making shots with great timing but also a high chance to miss with poor timing oh okay i see what you're saying oh that's kind of a good that's kind of a good thing though i'm not gonna lie that's kind of a good thing to put in the game due to the simple fact players who are skilled at timing their shots will get a high reward if you suck at timing your shots you're cooked you don't get if you go high risk and you suck at time of your shots you're cooked okay and i'm using ja morant here the difficulty is on hall of fame and we're going to go in and we're going to check out Ja's three-point rating it is a 78 three-point rating and i did go look at his badges after he has no limitless range so not even bronze limitless range uh you know he's got a few shooting badges if i remember correctly but i just looked to see if he had limitless it's on hall of fame and like i was you know this is using jaws jump shot base with no jump shot boost i don't think he had any three point hot zones like and i was still able to just green 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 so in my opinion if you're not using high risk high reward you're going to be at an extreme disadvantage especially when you play against other good players like i said unless you have bad wi-fi or something you're going to be on that high risk now the next thing i wanted to test was limitless range it's on hall of fame and i'm shooting from the logo steph has Hall of Fame Limitless Range. So, you, you know, this year you can get Legend Limitless Range, but no NBA players that we played on had Legend badges. So I wasn't able to test any Legend badges, but as you can see, I can shoot from basically the center circle with Hall of Fame Limitless. Now, Steph does have a 99.3, but he only has half Limitless. So it's going to be interesting to see what that Legend Limitless is like. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about- That's going to be tough, bro about the new stick shooting okay obviously we've, we've read about it now this is it in action basically it gives you two timings it gives you a feedback on the first initial push of the stick in terms of your timing and then it gives you 
a second reading at the bottom that talks about your tempo. Now, if you green both the timing and the tempo, you make it every time from what I saw. If you green one or the other, you make it a decent amount of the time. But as you see in the screenshot, you got the time. Mm. So it's like, a, okay, I'm about to explain this to y'all, bro. It's like a free throw, bro. It's like when you're shooting a free throw. But you get time off your your how you time the up and the down, like the from the going down to up and the tempo. If you keep it the same speed from going down and up. But if you go down slow and you go up fast, that's bad tempo. So you you got but if you time it right, you got a 50 out of that he said a high chance. So like 60, maybe a 60% chance of hitting it. You know what I'm saying? But you agree it every time you get good tempo and good timing. Timing and the tempo. And you know, I don't right know. here, I, I got great timing, great tempo. So they're both green. You make the shot every time from what I saw. But the main problem I think is going to come with this is let's look at the two situations. First of all, catch and shoot. When you're catching and shooting using the stick shooting, it seemed like there was a slight delay. Like there was a little bit of a hitch in terms of how fast you could get the shot off. And maybe I was just doing it wrong because it was the first time playing the game, but even people that I talked to, they kind of said they felt like they could shoot much quicker. Like you could instantly shoot the ball if you shot with the button on catch and shoots. Um, and there was that slight hitch, slight delay using the stick, which obviously is gonna lead to your shot getting contested more because you can't get the shot off as quickly. The other situation besides catch and shoot is dribbling. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking when he first said it. Dribbling and shooting with that dribble stick might be kind of crazy, bro. That might be kind of hard to do. And like, imagine trying to really dribble, 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 and you just go down and up and middle of shooting. That obviously, might... it's something new, and I was only experimenting with it for a few minutes on this demo version of 2K25. But to go from comboing dribble moves to then shooting with the stick it felt very awkward and, and maybe that's just because it's new if i had to guess whether people are going to use it or not i would say majority of people will not use this nah, kind of like the shot aiming back in 2k21 i think it was 2k21 if y'all remember that i feel like it's going to kind of be like that you'll get a few people experimenting with it but for the most part people are going to stick with that button shooting especially with the high risk option i just feel like it was so consistent even with that uh, even with John Morant with the 78 three ball, like imagine, you know, are my players with much higher ratings with jump shot boost with hot zones, lethal zones, et cetera, et cetera. Y'all, you guys understand what I'm saying? The one situation I think I could see people potentially using the stick shooting is on fades. Now these clips are from my boy swag. He was testing it out and he said it felt really good when he was just kind of running to the side and shooting like a mid range fade. So maybe people will use that. He said he would kind of experiment with it more and, and consider it. But well, for someone like me, who's typically isoing, I don't see myself comboing. Mm, that might be tough. Up and create if you got a high midi and you go up and down like a free throw from the fade. Getting space and then using the stick to shoot. So experiment with it as you want. I'll probably test it out a little bit more, but I think I'm just going to be shooting with the button on that high risk, high reward. Go to shots. These are actually pretty cool. How effective will they be? I'm not sure. And did they soup up the green window on these? I don't know, because I was green and reds and yellows on these like crazy. And yes, this is on Hall of Fame. That is a very tight red coverage that we're going to get into shortly on Hall of Fame difficulty over Michael Jordan, who has straight Hall of Fame defensive badges. Here's another one right here with Kevin Durant. And it's a green, uh, another red contest over Chris Middleton. So the go-to shots, the reason I like them is just because they look really, really nice. Aesthetically, they are very pleasing. They look very like they literally, as, an, as a fan of the NBA, they look just like the player movements from real life. Now, some of them are a little slow and they don't create a lot of space. That so do look tough. I'm not gonna lie, Chad, that do look tough though. Not gonna lie, that do look much tough. Much people will actually use them in like online gameplay. But the one thing that is good about these, as uh, we read in the courtside report, if you watched that video or, or read about it yourself, you can, at any moment out of those combinations, you can speed boost out of it. You can also, at any moment, as you, let's say you go tween, behind the back, tween, tween, pop. At any moment in that sequence, you can do a different dribble move. So let's say I go tween, behind the back, between and then i want to just do like an escape and run right i can escape and run right at any moment within that whole sequence and so I they let you dribble cancel it that's kind of tough i'm not gonna lie that is tough bro they let you dribble cancel it's like the shot canceling 
feature that they were talking about. And I was a little skeptical because I was like, well, on this, on, on past 2Ks, you could shot cancel, like you do a hop jumper, you just don't shoot it, right? You do a hop jumper and then just like run out of it. But it was much smoother, like they said, I will say. So we'll have to experiment with it. I'm sure everyone's gonna find like the one or two good like signature go-to shot that creates a ton of space or allows you to like really hop away and then like combo out of that and, and get to the basket or whatever they, you know we're people are always gonna find like the most effective ones and use them online but from it like from a visual standpoint they looked really good and i don't know if they souped up the green windows like i said but i was green and contested signature go-to shots a lot and all the gameplay you see in this video is on hall of fame off dribble shooting uh for those of you that love the mid-range and love the hop jumpers and fades and all that it felt really good I'll be honest, like, eh, I mean, obviously I'm using... Here come Ticino, boy. Ticino about to be running and floating and and, and swinging through there like Spider-Man. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, boy. Is he not, chat? Kevin Durant and some other really good high-rated players, but it felt very greenable. Yellows, reds, felt... I think the mid-range is going to be lethal again on this game. Like, it's going to be something people can go to with the front fades, the side fades, the back fades, the hop jumpers, spin shots, all the stuff that all you, like, midi-loving players loved about 24. I feel like the mid-range is going to be just as effective on this game. Um, so, yeah, whether you're shooting the signature shots, the hop shots, the fades, the mid-range is, is definitely going to be back this year, in my opinion. Uh, of course, I'm just playing against the AI, but I think I get a pretty good sense of it from what I tested and midis are going to be good yet again. Let's get into meter dunking. Now, the first thing you might see, the actual meters, there is no green window that it shows. So in order to determine whether it's a good or a bad dunk attempt, I'm not really sure. Um, it, it's a bit of guesswork. Did it feel good? Oh, it still felt good. Yep, it, it still felt real good. Uh, I did not green all of them, so it wasn't like super duper easy to the point that you could just be brain dead and do it. All of these are on Hall of Fame. But as I said, there's no green window to tell you if it's like, like in 24, for example, you'd say, oh, it's a big meter or a small meter. You know, they talked about the dunk meter logic was gonna change and it wasn't just gonna be straight up big or straight up tiny like there was going to be in between but we don't even know if there you know we don't really even know what is considered an in between or what's considered a big meter small meter we don't know any of that because when you go up regardless of which of the three dump meters you you pick it doesn't show you a green window and the same is for standing dunks that we're going to get into in a second so i guess it's going to be a lot i'm just getting a glimpse of how i want to play man i think i'm getting a glimpse of how i want to play bro a lot of trial Already. and error on what's a good take and what's like super greenable the one thing i will say is is going against smaller play like jaw dunking on a guard definitely felt a lot easier as i miss on as i miss one on dinwit i mean i show that <clears throat> the one thing i will say is the opponent the defender mattered for example like trying to dunk on draymond felt a lot more difficult than trying to dunk on a guard like a kyrie irvin or something like Mm, so your your defensive badges might actually matter. Your height and all that might actually matter on your player, bro. That might actually matter, bro. It definitely felt like the defenders' attributes and badges mattered more than it did on 24, which yeah, overall is a saying. good thing. I think that makes sense. But like I said, without being able to see the green window, you really don't know what's a good or a bad take. It's going to be a lot of trial and error. Did it still feel good? Absolutely. Let's get into shot contests. So they took away percentages. And from what I understand, there won't be percentages in the real game either. So there's wide open, I think there's open, and then there's light pressure, which is a yellow contest, and then there's tight, which is a red contest. And then another degree that I saw was very tight, but it was also red colored. So I'm assuming it's just like, obviously a heavier contested tight shot, but we don't know like how much more of a, an effect that has. Now, the bigger question I have is some of these shot contest systems. So I just have two examples here because I don't want to go on and on for hours and hours. But check this out. Okay, KD pulls up. It's a light pressure. Okay, shooting it over Brooke Lopez. Now let's check out this MJ fade over Dwayne Wade. That's a red. So let's let's break this picture down. I froze it at the release point of both of their jump shots. If you see the first one on the left with Dwayne Wade, I reached. I'm the defender in this situation. I that is kind of crazy, chat. 
tried to like get a strip animation or something like that. So there is no hand even above Michael Jordan's waist at the time of him releasing that. That thing. is crazy. And I got a red contest. Now on the flip side over here with Kevin Durant, Brooke Lopez contested this shot pretty damn well. Like his hand is all the way up basically by Durant's wrist, almost right by his hand. It might be like one of those in real life where you shoot and the defender, you know, you high five the defender as you release the ball. Like he's right there and that's a yellow. So that makes me think maybe Dwayne Wade's perimeter is much higher than Brooke Lopez's. Maybe his challenger is much higher or is it going to go back to contests where it's just really depends on where you're standing? Like if you're in the hit box, a hit box probably isn't the right term, but you understand what I'm saying. If you're, if you're like right up against the defender, even without a hand up, is it going to be a red this year? Cause I'm going to be honest though. The jump shot that KD's taking looks a hell of a lot more contested than the one that Michael Jordan's taking. That's And like that's I said, facts. Jordan, that's going to be crazy. Contest. I hope, you know what y'all, I hope that's not, I hope that's not what's going on in this picture, bro. If if it is chat, that's gonna really throw me off, bro. I'm not gonna say it's gonna throw me off, but that's throwing me off. Um, that's the one thing out of all the news as we 16, 16 minutes in on this video. That's the one thing that's kind of like sounding kind of crazy. Like he not even putting his hand up and he getting a tight contest. But like he said, it could be the ways ways perimeters, which is way higher. It might make sense though if you if you look at it like this, right? KD got probably Hall of Fame dead eye too. You got to think about that too. Hall of Fame dead eye plus somebody is jumping at him with no defensive badges. That might be why it says that. Jordan might got only silver dead eye or maybe silver, bronze. And the way it has better, you know what I'm saying, stats, defensive stats to make him get that tight. This was a you know red. What I'm saying? And the KD contest was a yellow. Yeah, I'm not we're, really sure about this. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not I don't really know sure. about that. Either. Obviously, online gameplay will be the ultimate determining factor on like how we feel about shot contests. But this was just something that I noticed when I was going back over all the gameplay that I had, and I was like, man, like that looks way more contested than the other one. And the other one registered as a red. So I'm not really sure how I feel about shot contests, and I can't really give you guys a good answer on if it's better, worse, or the same, or whatever the case may be, as opposed to 24. So this is one. My bad. I'm just showing you the example. I can't give you an answer on this one. So let's talk about them taking away the percentages real quick. Immediately my brain goes, man, like there's a big difference between a 6% yellow contest and a 36% yellow contest. And we're not gonna know that this year. So does that mean every single light contest is exactly the same? Does that mean, you know, obviously the, the depending on the level of your challenger and your perimeter defense, does that make it easier to get a red contest instead of a yellow? Or is it just across all, all you know, is whatever's a yellow is a yellow regardless of badges, but then because of the level of the badge will be like how effective that yellow contest is. It just kind of raises a lot of uh, questions about how effective shot contests are gonna be because you're not gonna yeah. really know in great detail what level the contest is. It's just either open, wide open, yellow or red like there's no one more information than that and from what i was told it's not getting added to the real game like this the way it was in the demo is how it's going to be in the game let's talk about some standing dunks some paint mash something for you centers now standing dunks first of all were really op in 24 because of the jab step no more jab steps in the paint every time you try to jab step you see right here it's just you pump fake pump fake pump fake there's no more you can't kobe jab in the paint or, or do any triple threat jab in the finally bro finally the paint now the one thing i will say about the standing meter dunks just like the driving meter dunks because there's no green window you don't really know what is a good one and a bad one so it's gonna again be a lot of trial and error did i green some absolutely you can also still uh standing contact dunk with x i got a couple of those in there in, in the limited amount of time where i was testing this um <clears throat> paint mashing until we play against other human beings is going to be tough to really get a read on it but one thing i will say is like moving people out of the way and going up with close shots did feel pretty effective obviously all these guys have high close shot like Giannis and when Benyama but look at like Giannis pushing Kevin Durant in and then going up and getting a layup still greening it over light pressure I feel like paint mashing could be determined a lot more this year off of 
potentially close shot, but more importantly, having some post control because without the jab step, to be able to create the space and 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 be able to create the room that you need to be that able to standing to dunk or standing layup, I feel like it could be a challenge because that was the main reason on 24 it was so good because of the jab. The jab would get you that separation, get the defender off of you, and then you could go up. But without having the jab, you're gonna have to go to other ways. And maybe post control becomes a little bit more important for a center who's looking to be an offensive option down low. We'll have to wait and see, like I said, until we play online, because just against the AI, it's never really a true read on how it's going to be. All right, let's get into some layups. Now, layups on 24 were really good, and as the year went on, more and more people found out about how good they were, and people started making the Devin Booker floater builds. The animation is still in the game. I didn't test it for too long, so I just got a couple clips for you there. I missed one. I made one. But also in the game, scoopers. Scoopers are back. You still get the cheese body to body scooper animation they did not remove that now the thing about this is i don't even know if the devs know this is in the game like once people found this move out they did it a lot in pro-am i know some people did it in the stage it was a bit more of a sweaty move but basically you could just body through somebody even if they had a 99 strength and you had no strength strength had nothing to do with it and that's why i i'm not sure the devs even know this is in the game so that body to body like scooper cheese layup animation is still a thing um and it is still very effective i green some yellows with it uh and most of them said open <clears throat> now also with that there's some cool new animations like that where it's like the dude's kind of pushing lebron in the back and it, it, I, it just looks cool and overall layups did feel very very effective now again it's against the ai like we have to wait and see how it feels online but overall layups they felt good. The D book floaters back, the scoopers back. Even if you don't get the scooper cheese lay, like where you the body to body scooper cheese, just even regular scoopers felt good. I greened a lot of a lot of layups, and then even like with the smaller players, like if they take you out of a dunk, you can green the layup. The those of you that were asking me to test the layups, I would definitely say for those of you that love layup builds and all that, it's definitely going to be viable again. There might even be some good new layup animations. We'll have to wait and see, you know, if, it, if we find like something even better than the D book floater this year or, or whatever. But definitely was fun to do the layups. There's some cool new animations that I noticed. And for those like more sweaty players, the D books back, the body to body scoopers are back. Those are all still going to be really effective. Now let's talk about some defense. Pluck steals were kind of tough to test, but for those locks that want bump steals back, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say they are back because I was blitzing the computer on Hall of Fame. And anytime my body hit that ball, the ball popped free. So those lockdowns that were frustrated all of 24 with not being able to get the bump steals they feel they were able to get, or they feel they should have got, I should say. I think you're gonna be able to get bump steals like crazy this year. Like, look, I'm blitzing Devin, but it's on Hall of Fame and I'm just blitzing it. Like anytime my body hit that ball, it popped free. And testing plucks with the NBA players against the AI is just difficult because not a lot of the guys have like Hall of Fame glove with 99 steel, like a, you know, a lockdown wood or, you know, <clears throat> anytime I did go for a reach on the ball, I did not get it. Now there's no right stick ripper. And when I tested it in 24, I was getting a ton of on ball steals. I didn't test it for very long this year. Cause you know, I had a limited amount of time and I had to get in the builder and all that. But to me, the, the main thing that stood out for steals was bump steals. That bump steals felt like they were like really effective. Like if you position yourself correctly and you get your body onto that, onto that basketball, it's going to pop free from the ball handler, which in my opinion, takes more skill than getting a pluck steal anyway. So I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm not sure about pluck steals, but they definitely didn't feel how they felt when I tested 2k24 last year at community day. Maybe I didn't test them enough, but I will say in the, in the demo mode that I played here, this demo version of the game, bump steals felt really, really good. Some more defense, the bumps, that you could get on the ball handler felt good. That on ball menace, I think that's what they said was like the new clamps as you see it popping up in the type, top right hand corner. You can get a lot of bumps, but like Bill Cartwright right there getting that little blow by animation on Chris Bosh. I don't think the bumps are like so OP to the point that people won't be able to move. Obviously, I think it's going to depend on what build is playing against what build, what the strength is, what the immovable forcer is, what the lightning launch is on, all that. But Bill Cartwright right there got a blow by animation moving in slow motion against Chris Bosh. 
But then I also got some really good bump animations with LeBron against uh, Scottie Pippen. So hopefully it's balanced and, and hopefully it's it's not just super RNG whether you get a good bump or they get a blow by. Hopefully it actually does depend on momentum and badges and attributes and all that. Tough to say against the AI, like I said, but once we get into online gameplay, I think within a couple weeks, we will definitely have our answer. We touched on paint defense a little bit already when we were talking about the meter dunks, but it felt pretty good in terms of like, if you kept your body between somebody and the hoop, you could definitely wall up. Chase down block right there with LeBron, definitely can still, you know, chase people down, <laughs> nothing crazy there. But did the computer make some red layups on me? Absolutely, you know, did they make some yellows on me? Absolutely. I think it all depends on your positioning and then also your rating and your badges. Anytime I feel like I was on a, a good enough defender and I got my body in position to stop a drive, I feel like I got the stop pretty consistently. Also, when I was doing the meter dunks, like I said, it was much harder to meter dunk on a Draymond Green than it was on a Kyrie Irving. So I think size, but then also attributes matter, like Draymond's defense and badges are definitely a lot better than Kyrie's when it comes to inside. So I think that's also a big factor to take into consideration, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, here we go again. Post scores, well... <sighs> Every year, bro. <laughs> Every year. They're gonna be godly, bro. They're going to be godly. I'm telling you. That's what I did not want to hear. Tired of post scores, man. Do that right now. You still get the spin throw animations. The post hooks felt good. The post fades felt good. And Joel only has gold post badges. So there's two tiers up, right? You can go to lead or you can go to Hoff, and then you could go to Legend. So a pure post score with Legend post badges. Just get ready, bro. That's all I'm saying. Just get ready. They're back. They are back again. They are back again. The fades felt real. Obviously, Embiid has a really good mid-range rating and, and post control rating and all that. So the fades with him did feel, you know, extremely good. I don't think we're gonna have as high a rating on uh, you know, if you mm, that was clean. Made a 7-3 post score. But I guess potentially you could if you went small wingspan. But anyways, my point is post scores are back. They're going to be godly. You can still throw people. The drop steps felt really, really good. The hooks, the fades. This was with gold badges. Imagine legend. Y'all get the point. On and on and on. Post scores. Yet again, they're going to be godly. Another thing to test was the blowout dribble. Now you do it with the flicking the right stick up. And I'll be honest, it, it did feel better than... 2k24 it definitely felt like you could actually kind of get downhill with it in terms of just getting separation from the opponent it did feel better but i was playing against the ai of course we got to see when there's another human being sprinting as fast as he can to try to catch up to you when it comes to ankle breakers i really only got one and i didn't even do it on purpose and it was on a hop jumper unfortunately so are ankle breakers back are they going to be effective i'm not really sure but one thing i will say was when i was dribbling on the perimeter a lot I would get oohs and ahs from the crowd and like I wasn't getting any crazy ankle breaker it was almost like I was getting stun animations just from doing like small little combos so it almost it almost seemed like it worked as ankle breaker but also tight handles if y'all remember tight handles we get those stun yeah. animations and it wasn't like anything crazy in terms of the stuns that presents problems guys thank you David but I heard the crowd every time I saw the defender wobble, even just a little bit, you know, ooh, uh, we'll see once we get online. I didn't like spam to get ankle breakers all that often, but everyone else I talked to said they barely got any. All right, a lot of you guys asked me about Patty Mills jump shot because it was so good in 24. And I'm gonna be honest, it's still fast. Obviously this is just at, this is the actual Patty Mills jump shot. I wasn't able to create a custom Patty Mills with different releases, but it is still really fast. Uh, it feels relatively the same as last year uh depending on shot contests and depending on obviously once you know 2k labs gets in and tests all the the green window sizes for the bases and the releases and all that it'll determine if it's going to be the best shot in the game again but in terms of speed and visual looks and everything i mean patty was still pattying i'm gonna be honest patty was still pattying so <laughs> It might be one of the best shots on the game again. We'll have to see. And a big determining factor on why Patty Mills was the best shot on, on 24 was the contest system. Just for whatever reason, just Patty would just register opens almost all the time. Like even the 5% contests on 24 looked like they should have been reds. Like it was crazy in terms of negating contests. That's why it really was 
a crazy, crazy shot on 24. Good, Alex, appreciate that follow. So we'll have to see how that plays out on 25, but it is still on 25, and it's still fast, and it looks the same. So for those of you that wanted me to test Patty, there's your quick little review. Well, that's need to take Patty out the game, man. That's a WW. I don't know. Everything was looking good except for... I, I hate to hear that the post scores is back. The contest system was looking crazy. There was a couple things that was looking crazy, man. Besides that, everything else was looking like it was a smooth W, bro. Everything else besides them three things.